Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Master. I'm one of the sports medicine physicians um, and one of the co-directors of the Minds Matter Concussion Program here at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We see a lot of concussions in children here at the Children's Hospital, and we're sure that you do as well. We'd like to share with you a lot of the new information that we're learning and update you on how to best diagnose and identify concussions in children in your practice. I'd like to introduce you to Ava. She's one of our patients who's had a couple of concussions from sports. She plays ice hockey. She's completely recovered now, but she's agreed to help us demonstrate the physical exam and the history that we would be taking to help you identify concussions in your practice. All right, Ava. So tell me about your last concussion. It happened about a month ago. Okay. Tell me a little bit about how it happened. Uh, I was going into a corner with a kid who was bigger than me, and he hit me from behind. Okay. And did you have symptoms right away? No. Okay. When did you start to have symptoms and start to wonder that maybe you had a concussion? The next day. Okay. And what were those symptoms? Uh, I was feeling nauseous, I had a headache, and sensitivity to light. Okay. And you were able to finish the game without any problems? Yes. Okay. Did you go to school the next day? Yes. Okay. What happened at school? I couldn't focus, my head hurt. When did you start to think that you had a concussion? That night. Okay. And then at that point, did you seek care with anybody else? My mom. Okay. All right. And that's when you decided to call and get an appointment to come in. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and were you continuing to do homework? Yes. And how about um, spending time on your cell phone or a desktop computer? Yes. And how did those make you feel? Uh, they made my head hurt. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you done any exercise since you had your injury? No. Okay. And then after resting for a bit at home, did that help your symptoms a little? Yes. Okay. In addition to the history of the current concussion, we'd also like to get some past information on her. We usually like to find out how she's done in school prior to this. What were her grades before her injury? We also like to find out in her history or in her family, does anybody have ADHD, dyslexia, or learning disability? Because these are some factors that can sometimes complicate the recovery. In addition, we like to ask if there's any history of migraines, anxiety, or depression. Um, in particular, we're also realizing now that it's important to find out if there's any um, visual disturbance in the family, whether or not she uh, wears glasses and is nearsighted or farsighted, or if there's any history in the family or in AVA of strabismus, amblyopia, eye surgery, eye patching for um, any kind of lazy eye kind of phenomenon. We also like to know if there's any history of motion sickness because the vestibular system can often be affected after concussion um, and a sign of motion sickness in the car may indicate they may have more of those symptoms after concussion. All right, so Ava, I want you to take a look at my finger. Follow my finger with your eyes. Don't move your head. We'll start slowly and go faster. Let me know if it gives you any symptoms. Otherwise, if it doesn't give you any symptoms, we'll keep going, okay? As you can see, Ava's doing a great job following my finger, and as we go faster, she's able to keep up. She doesn't have any problems with any symptoms. Um, she's not blinking or having her eyes water excessively or complaining of headache or dizziness. Um, just to note, when you track, sometimes you can have a few beats of nystagmus at the end, gaze, like she has here, that's normal. But when you come to the middle, she locks in nice and solid, and there's no nystagmus at, um, in the central gaze. This is the smooth pursuit portion of the exam. Now, Ava, I want you to hold your head still. I want you to look at my fingers left, right, left, right, as fast as you can until it gives you symptoms or I tell you to stop, okay? Go ahead. Now, as you can see, Ava is performing the horizontal saccades. She's going nice and smoothly. It's not fatiguing, it's not tired. She's not um, blinking or stopping because she's having headache or dizziness. Oftentimes, when kids are acutely symptomatic, they will have trouble with this, um, this movement. Um, what happens is they'll often have their eyes start to water, um, or they'll blink, or they'll stop, and they'll say that they have either um, headache or dizziness um, provoked by this maneuver. Let's do it up and down now, Ava. Up and down, keep your head still, look at both of my fingers um, as fast as you can. So again, as you can see, Ava's not having any symptoms, 
She's not having any watering of her eyes. Her eyes are not fatiguing. She's not blinking or stopping because she has dizziness or headache. But often what we'll do is also ask the kids, did that cause any dizziness or headache, Ava? No. Great, wonderful, all right. Take a look at my thumb. I want you to focus on my thumb and then I want you to bounce and keep bouncing and let me know when that starts to give you any headache or dizziness um, or bother you at all. Otherwise, we'll keep going and I'll tell you when to stop. This is the vertical vestibulo-ocular reflex, or gaze stability testing. All right, you can stop, Ava, that looks great. Uh, when kids have symptoms with this, they'll often stop, or they won't be able to do it quite as rapidly. Um, often they can have um, their eyes start to water, or they'll complain of worsening headache or dizziness. Now we'll do the horizontal vestibulo-ocular reflex. Focus on my finger, shake your head side to side, and keep going until I tell you to stop, or if it gives you symptoms. Great. And did that give you any symptoms at all? Headache or dizziness? No. Nope. Great. Wonderful. So now we're going to measure uh, some uh, binocular visual function. In particular, we're interested in convergence. And this ruler is called a convergence rule. You can purchase this. Um, it's a specialty piece of equipment used by developmental optometrists. Uh, if you don't have access to a convergence rule, you can also use a pen um, and have the um, patient bring it close to their face and their nose to estimate what their convergence is in the same manner. We're going to have her take a look at the letters on this card. Um, we're going to ask her when they become blurry and when the line becomes double, and that'll give us a sense of where her convergence point is. Ava, take a look at the letters that are on the card. Are they clear? Yep. Great. Tell me when they get blurry. Blurry. Tell me when they become double. Double. Tell me when it's single again. Tell me when it's clear again. Clear. Great. And then now we're going to measure her accommodation. Cover your left eye. This is single eye accommodation. Is the, are those letters clear? Yep. Tell me when they get blurry. Blurry. And then cover your right eye. Are those letters clear? Yes. Tell me when they're blurry. They're blurry. Great. So we would record all of those numbers for convergence and accommodation um, and track that over time as she recovers. In general, kids should be able to converge less than six centimeters um, and we would expect that to be normal. Lastly, we'll take a look at your balance. We're gonna step out into the hallway. I'd like you to walk heel toe, heel toe like you're on a tightrope and we'll do it forwards and backwards with your eyes open and closed, okay? All right, great. So now we're going to test her balance. Um, we like to challenge their balance by having them do a tandem gait forwards and backwards with their eyes open and their eyes closed. Um, each step of the way gets a little bit um, more challenging and is um, able to provoke more problems with kids who have concussion to be able to identify them if they have balance difficulties. Please note that uh, kids with concussion may uh, have very poor balance and so be aware um, that you're near them or nearby so that if they lose their balance uh, you can help steady them so that they stay safe. All right, Ava, we're going to walk in a tandem gait, heel toe, heel toe, eyes open, going forwards, and then I'll tell you when to close your eyes. Go ahead. Great, so you can see she's doing a great job. Now close your eyes. She has no sway. She's keeping her hands by her side. Open your eyes and stop. Now we're going to go backwards, eyes open. And this is a little bit more difficult than going forwards. And then closing your eyes is the most difficult part of all. Great, you can stop. So a lot of our kids, when they have an acute concussion, will have trouble with um, any of these maneuvers. Uh, sometimes they'll sway back and forth. Sometimes they'll have their arms go up from their side to help them maintain their balance. And sometimes they'll step off the tandem gait line uh, because they're not able to maintain their balance. So that concludes the pediatric history and physical for the concussion. Thanks for joining us and thanks to Ava for contributing and participating with us on this.